recently Elijah Wood re entered the conversation or reignited the conversation of pedophilia within Hollywood, which is, of course, an underreported issue, not something that you hear a lot about. And as a result, um, The Hollywood Reporter decided to do an interview with Corey Feldman, who's been very open about the fact that pedophilia very much does exist in Hollywood and is not something that has been properly dealt with. Now, interestingly enough, um, Corey Haim, who's a good friend of his who uh, died of a drug overdose, uh, was also a victim of getting raped when he was a child by members of the industry. But it's unclear who these members are. Names have not been named. And Corey Feldman, although he has been open about his personal experiences, also refuses to name any names. As a result, he was questioned about this, and The Hollywood Reporter has his answers. So let's get to that. Now, Corey Feldman says, with me, there were some molestations, uh, and it did come from several hands, so to speak. But with Corey Haim, his was direct rape, whereas mine was not actual rape, and his also occurred when he was 11. My son is 11 now, and I can't even begin to fathom the idea of something like that happening to him. So first, I wanted to make a comment about how interesting it is that Corey Feldman is kind of downplaying his own horrific experiences, yeah. right? Um, any type of physical contact that's unwanted is something that anyone should be outraged by. Um, and I get what he's saying. It wasn't you know, maybe he wasn't penetrated by someone, I don't know, right? But it's still something that he should take seriously and should speak out about as much as he possibly can so people who are in the same position know to speak out and know to do something about it and not hide in the shadows like a lot of victims do. I think it might be a little bit instinctive mm -hmm. that the way that those who are brought up in this Hollywood light, they are kind of trained to answer things that way mm -hmm. and almost protect the sanctity of Hollywood, right? Because we see Elijah Wood as well, he made those comments and straight away, right on Twitter. Oh, I didn't. I have never experienced it firsthand, so I don't know if it's actually true or not. But we have seen so many examples. We've seen so many cases now where it's often it's involved in Hollywood in positions of someone who's in power and has the ability to maybe use their name or the weight of Hollywood to take advantage of someone else, yeah. right? So I, I think that, that that did come across alarming to me because it was almost like he was playing down the, the molestation of himself as a way to not as much just throw a Hollywood, all those people that potentially may have been involved completely under the bus straight away, other people have been involved. And I think that that will speak volumes for how people react to Hollywood, is that it's often assumed that they don't want to come out and tell the full truth and tell everything honestly because it may jeopardize their reputation, it may jeopardize the person who's involved's rep uh, reputation because it's this star-studied environment that everyone has painted to be just the, the be all and end all, and everyone wants to be part of it. But people will use that to their own benefit. And there's tons of examples. I mean, it doesn't just happen in Hollywood, by the way. We have the Jimmy Savile case mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom, which uh, I learned a lot about through there. Where it was another radio and TV personality who used his name and the weight of his character and everything to try and lure people into compromised situations. And it's happened before. So I'm not surprised uh, at his, uh, I would say, his claims. I'm not surprised at his reaction as well. I am surprised by his reservations, which I yeah. think we all agree on. I think it's also very odd to qualify child molestation, but something that we should acknowledge is that Corey Feldman is a very odd guy. Mm -hmm. And this interview struck me as very bizarre. And I th that's unfortunate because I feel like it kind of damages his story. Mm -hmm. Because I have heard variations of Corey Feldman's story. This is a random thing about me. I actually am kind of a bizarre, big Corey Heyman, Corey Feldman fan. Mm -hmm. I follow his YouTube channel, his music career, um, in kind of a weird, like, you can't look away sort of, Fascination. Way. Fascination. Mm -hmm. He's a very fascinating guy. He had this incredible career, both of the Corys did, and then they just kind of, it, just these two train wrecks. And you can undoubtedly tie that to the abuse that they were suffering. Um, but when these stories come out, he's just this, he's just this character that so I don't think people take him seriously. I think we can look at what happened with Elijah Wood and be like, people took that guy seriously. But with, you know, Corey Feldman at the end, he's, you know, talking about his album and it, I, I worry think, that he's like a laughing stock, so no one is really listening. Look, I, I don't follow him as closely as you do, but what I think does... No one could. The, <laughs> I think what does hurt him to some extent is the fact that he refuses to name names. But now that he's explained why, it makes a lot of sense. So let yeah. me get into that 
little bit. So he says, I'm not able to name names. People are frustrated. People are angry. They want to know how is this happening, and they want answers. And they turn to me, and they say, why don't you be a man and stand up and name names and stop hiding and being a coward? Then he raises a very, very important issue that I think is relevant, very relevant today, especially given um, what's happening in the Bill Cosby cases. So he says, California, conveniently enough, has a statute of limitations that prevents that from happening, meaning that, hey, there's a statute of limitations, so these people are not going to be prosecuted, right? Because if they were to go and mention anybody's name, I would be the one that would be in legal problems, and I'm the one that would be sued. I think that's really relevant because a lot of people will ask, okay, well, why? Look at what happened in the Bill Cosby case, okay? Mm -hmm. More than 50 women have come forward, and in the vast majority of those cases, the statute of limitations has run out. And as a result, these women who are just trying to raise awareness about what happened to them, they have nothing to gain, are being ostracized, they're being criticized, they're being dragged through the mud as a result of coming forward, because you can't have a trial. You can't have a trial and you can't investigate Bill so Cosby. Then you're in the trial of public opinion. That's which exactly sucks. right. Which is the worst trial of, yeah. you know, to be in, period. <laughs> and so he's saying that he doesn't want to go through that. And I get it. I, I get his reasoning. But at the same time, if you don't name names, then no one really has a warning about these individuals yeah. that might still be part well, of Hollywood. Well, he says <laughs> still are problems in the yeah. Hollywood business. And I think exactly. that he knows that if he were to come forward and name names, Unfortunately, this is a guy who would be, it would be really easy to drag him through the mud because, as I said, he is kind of an oddball. And mm -hmm. while that makes him a compelling public figure, um, it doesn't help him if he were to name names. So it, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it brings up the issue of the statute of, lim statute of limitations, and it's frustrating. There's it's no frustrating. There right should answer. not be, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something. There should not be a statute of limitations on issues involving rape. Or murder. Criminal there cases. should not be, in criminal cases, there should not be a statute of limitations. I need someone to explain to me why this makes sense. If but, someone raped someone 25 years ago, it doesn't change that behavior. That behavior took place, it was an unlawful behavior, and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent. Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were children when they were molested and when Corey ha uh, Haim was raped, okay? And so, they're kids. What did you want them to do? Come forward and talk to prosecutors? They have no idea what's going on or, or whether or not what's happening to them is right or wrong. It's, and so you need yeah. to make sure that you have the proper protections in place so these people who are doing something wrong can be investigated and they can be prosecuted. The same excuses are fed to um, these people and the, when the case actually happens to them when they're so young is you don't want to be caught up in that media circus. They, that is the exact yes. words taken from the Jimmy Savile case and it was 38 years later that uh, a, a young girl by that time was obviously a woman came forward and says that I was told when I was that age you don't want to be caught up in the media circus because you're fighting against an establishment that has this, that has this almost ceremonial Aside to it, it reminds me a little bit of like the Catholic Church, and it's the way that they're so engraved in that culture, like the way that the, pri uh, the priests involved are protected, that those that are looking to rely on those priests and are taken advantage of almost feel like they're just never going to win. You're going up against something that's so ceremonial, yeah. like Hollywood. How are you yeah. going to win against an establishment that's been built for years, and these people are literally paid to develop contracts after contracts to protect themselves from being sued out of anyone? So how are you, if you're young and... In half of these cases, by the way, this also will trickle over to why it's mental health is such a big issue when it comes to Hollywood, and we often just jump to the conclusion, oh, uh, like when whoever else goes off the edge, the child star, ah, oh, they're just crazy. Well, maybe it's because they've been thrown into this environment. Right. They don't know how to react. All they're told to do is, you're going to be a star. Do it whatever means possible. And people will see that, take that as a green light to go and take advantage. That's why this happens, and that's why when they feel that like they're going to fight against Hollywood, they're never going to win until someone maybe does speak up more people will speak out and bring it to light.